Yo, what's going on my Destiny dudes? So, check it out. Today's video, this is gonna be a two-part thing. What I'm gonna show you guys is gameplay from the Trials of Osiris. I'm gonna give you the settings that I used for the Darkest Before, which is a pulse rifle that you get from the Prophecy Dungeon, as well as I use the sidearm from the Iron Banner. Now, the other part of the gameplay video is gonna be my thoughts on the new Trials of Osiris Labs. The thing that they did where they're testing out the whole flag capture zone, trying to make things more fair, whatever. Okay, check it out. So, what we're looking at right here, you've got the Darkest Before Pulse Rifle. At sensitivity 5, for my controller sensitivity settings, I put the Pulse Rifle at 45 for anti-recoil, and I'm using the Doom Eternal Game Pack. Now that's very specific, because if you're using a different game pack, like the Destiny 2 Season of the Lost, or what are we in? Season of the Lost Game Pack? You tend to get a couple of issues, right? You tend to get that bug where it tends to turn off your rapid fire randomly, or the whole, you know, the thing doesn't even work with your audio. The Doom Eternal Game Pack has been much better for me. So, that's the one that I've been using. The aim assist is also much better. So I'm gonna put the values in there for you for the Doom Eternal Game Pack. All right, check it out. You've got the Darkest Before at Anti-Recoil 45 at Controller Sensitivity 5 through 10. You don't have to change much from there, but you can adjust your zen if you need to in game. If that anti-recoil starts to be a bit of a problem. I'm using that for both the sidearm as well as the pulse rifle. So remember, rapid fire enabled so you can just hold the trigger down and then anti-recoil at 45 and then you've got the aim assist at half value. Anything more than that, the screen shake is a little bit too wild for my liking. All right, um, that being said, when you use the, uh, when you set up the Doom Eternal game pack, what you're gonna get with this one is you're gonna get the old Destiny left. settings that they originally had started with. The settings that were, you know, very original to the game itself. So it, it just feels to me a lot better. It felt like what I was used to. I understand what they're trying to do with the new game pack and the new settings and all that. They're trying to make it more similar to the Warzone Call of Duty. I don't think it works the same way, so I don't really like it as much. But maybe that's just because I'm an old dude and, you know, change scares me. Okay, so those are the settings for Both the pulse rifle and, and the sidearm using the Doom Eternal game pack. I'm going to put a, uh, what do you call it, a clip, or not a clip, a card, so you guys can see the settings that I did for the Darkest before, if you're curious to check that out. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to cover with you guys, I want to go over this new thing, Trials Lab, and whether it's a positive or a negative or whatever, Bungie has a lot of stuff going on right now, man, and... You know, the long and the short of this is that I think Trials Lab is a great idea. I think they implemented it at a very bad time. But they also had to implement it at the time they did because we have the most player population within Trials at this moment. So they're trying to figure out not just what's going to keep people engaged with Trials, but also what's going to keep them sticking around and what's going to make things most fair. I get what they're going after. Um, I just think they should have spread it out a little bit. I think this whole... You know, change everything. I mean, they had week one and it was killer. Everyone loved it. I, I did not hear any complaints whatsoever. Nothing but positive feedback and praise. Now, if you're a corporate manager or whatever and you're in charge of all this and you see this and you're like, wow, this is going really well, is your first impression to change that? I think you should have waited to see what happened next week before making any changes at all. Or you should have just came out with the whole flawless pool thing in the very beginning. Now, I'm not against Flawless Pool. I think that's a great idea because it gets people involved in this game mode that I kind of like now. I didn't like it before because it was just Sweat McGee on top of Sweat McGee on top of Recovery on top of Hacker McGee. So, what we have right now is we have an actual game setting, right, uh, for Trials that is very, very loot-driven, very reward-based, and it's a different type of game mode, which is more fun for me anyway. I like playing things that are different. Um, now... If they keep it like they did in this week, week three, I actually enjoyed this the most for a couple of reasons. 
The first reason being, I enjoy the difference in strategy when you force players. And like you see, I just lost that round right there. We did not have a good enough strategy at that time to take back a zone. That's good. That's making us work as a team better. We're now forcefully communicating with each other a little more so that our gameplay has to be top notch, even if we're not like a crazy good team. If we were a better team, you know, to start this off, by the time we ended all this, we did go flawless a couple of times. But if we were one of those teams that like actually practiced these strategies together, then it would have been even easier for us to take these kids out that are arguably not as skilled as we are at the game, right? But that to me kind of drives home the point. It's not that they are better or worse than us. You could be a team that's arguably worse and have a better strategy for defending the zone and win. That is really awesome to me. It's not just someone going 1v3 all the time. There's now an objective. I like objective-based game modes better. I think it forces you to use actual strategy. It makes you play as a team, and you can see the differences of strategy that people come up with in these game modes. So, personally speaking, I like this one the best. I don't care about flawless pool or whatever. They want a flawless pool. That's fine, man. Um, I'll play against whoever you guys do. I don't care about that. What I do care about is people leaving the game mode because they are getting stomped. And people were leaving the game mode because they were getting their butt kicked by these guys that are resetting their card at round six or card win six or whatever just to do their carries, okay? Um, if they just leave week one and mix it in with week three where they did this whole objective-based game mode but they also kind of left everything alone, just let people run as many cards as they want, man. Have some fun with it. Let them play with their friends if they want. That's a cool thing then that would be the best possible part of both these worlds, in my opinion. Now, if you guys are curious about the Zen settings that I put from the Doom Eternal, I will put it on the screen again. It does work, okay? It's been pretty good for me in the trials, but I used the Darkest before mostly because it was a top 10 gun and I wanted to showcase it a little bit. My strategy going on later in the rounds, um, because I kept getting very frustrated, by both shatter dives as well as people using the stag in the uh, in the rift and stuff like that, I eventually changed over to using the risk runner as an SMG, and that thing was shredding, as well as my teammate using a wither horde to cut off lanes. This was a strategy that we had to come up with so that we could actually win games, like really win games and play hard for us. The wither horde shot was banked right off the middle. Sometimes he'd catch somebody with it off the wall. We practiced the bank shot so he could try to catch somebody with it, meaning we got like an immediate pick, or they couldn't sit in a rift, or we would actually get them to separate so we could slice the pie a little bit, split them up, and we could take them 2v1 or 3v1. So those are all strategies we came up with, one, because of how the map is designed, right? Because of the trials and the meta and the report that was going on with people using the stag, but also because we had to focus on how to capture this game flag which is so cool we then close down areas with like um you know a shield or a super or a wither horde and they had to forcefully find a way around that that is awesome strategic gameplay in my book i like that better um sure there's gonna be a bit of cheese you know people sitting on the flag and not really pushing the point but you know what man that's part of it you have to learn how to get by all this stuff and how to play in such a way that you can forcefully take that point back so that you have the advantage I really enjoyed this. I thought it really leveled the playing field in some of our matches. The good teams that beat us, they were going to stop us either way, man. They are just that freaking good at the game, you know? Sometimes there just ain't nothing you can do. You can do everything right and still lose, okay? It's just the way it's, you know, some people are that good. Anyway, that is it for today, my dudes. I really thought this was an awesome change that they made to Trials. I'm greatly enjoying all these changes. I really like things to be different and varied. I don't really want to be playing the same elimination game mode for the last six years because, yeah, okay. I mean, I, I get what it... I think I get, anyway, what people want it to be. But let's be honest, man. If you're going to keep the casual population... I know I used the C word. I'm sorry. Uh, engage. You need to make it more friendly. It can't just be hardcore all the time, man. Hardcores don't run the joint. They run part of it. And I understand that hardcores are the reason that Destiny still exists. I am well aware of that. But they can't be the only reason that decisions are made off of, okay? You guys have to be welcoming to a different crowd of people. Otherwise, the game tanks and you're sitting there wondering why you can't get anything done because Bungie don't want to listen to you, okay? Bungie listened to the hardcore crowd. 
And that's why we got D2 at the beginning with double primaries, okay? They listened to the hardcores, and then nobody liked it. Not even the hardcores. <laughs> I'll just leave that there for you. All right, so you guys get the you get the, the strange honor of hearing me try out a new closing line. Right? I've been talking to some people about this. Um, I know the famous one is Stay Frosty, Guardians. I don't want to tread on their, their whatever over there, so I'm going to use Stay Toasty or Keep It Zen. Ha-ha! Seriously, don't unsubscribe. Love you guys. Have a good one. Bye! You are eager to be big. I can see it. So go then. Find them. One minute left, my friend. Only one enemy is left. Your team tore through them like wild animals. The round is yours. You're in the league. Let your opponents chase you all they want. <laughs> Your team is in the lead, guys. Do not relent. Getting tired! Finish this! 